Hi everyone, so here we are at the second lecture and now we'll be talking about the factors of production. Right, so all goods and services are produced using resources that we as economists like to call factors of production. So these are productive resources that we use to produce and hence we call them factors of production. Now there are four categories of this. You have your land, your raw materials. Some textbook will just categorize this as land. Of course you have your labor, you have capital and entrepreneurship. So here is some detail into what these actually are. So land refers to gifts of nature that we use to produce our goods and services, right? So your land, your oil, um, your wind for your wind turbines, all these are gifts of nature. We don't pay for them. So we call these land. Now your time and work effort that people have to do, use to um, turn goods and services from your raw materials into your finished product, your human effort is called labor, right? Of course, your quality of labor um, depends on certain things. For instance, it depends on education, on the job training, work experience, right? And this is why education is very, very important for uh, labor, right? And this is why we as economists always bang on about labor and education, right? You can't um, produce these things in isolation. You can't get your final products in isolation. Um, you need tools, you need machinery, you need buildings, you need instruments, and you have to buy these things. Um, for this, we need capital, of course, and your human resource that organizes all these uh, together, so organizes the land, your labor, your capital together, is called entrepreneurship. And this is why entrepreneurs are so important, because they have the vision, they have the audacity, they have the grit to bring all this together and produce. Now land as a factor of produ production uh, earns rent. So um, say you have your land uh, somewhere, you rent it out, you earn rental income. You have a house, you rent it out, you get rental income. Um, you have a, a property, right? You get a rental income. Labor, labor earns wages. So your salary, um, your income as a, as, a, as a human being, you earn ages, um, wages. Capital earns interest. You put your capital in the bank, you get some interest from it. Um, entrepreneurship earns profit. Okay, so after you've done your business, you you earn profit. It's important to know um, um, what each factor of production um, earns. Okay, so your rent, wages, your interest, and your profit, right? Um, and now we go on to the big microeconomic questions. Later, we'll talk about macroeconomics, but for now, let's focus on microeconomics. So, remember what we said, we said resources are scarce, central problem in economics, choices have to be made. So, we have three main um, categories of choices that have to be made in any society. The first is, what are we going to produce? Okay, so what to produce? Okay, so what goods and services are we going to produce? OK, and in what quantities are we going to produce this? Because you have to remember that we don't have enough resources to produce everything. OK, so what to produce? Our first problem, right? So are we going to produce iPhones? Are we going to produce Samsung phones? Are we going to produce yachts? OK, um, and then you have social social um, questions come into play when you're talking about this. Then how do we produce these things? OK. Um, what resources are we going to use? Also, in what quantity? So how are we going to produce this? Are we going to um, use uh, machinery, uh, human labor, um, you know, um, scientists? So how, how exactly are we going to get to our, our finished product? And then the last one is for whom do we produce? Do we produce for the elderly, for uh, the middle age, for the youth, for the children? Okay, because once again, we have fixed amount of resources. So who gets the goods and services that we are going to produce? Um, normally, this depends on your income. So a company will say, okay, let's uh, appeal to this demographic, right? Let's make um, cartoons for kids. 
Hollywood will say, okay, um, there's a there's an age limit on this movie. It's for middle-aged people. Okay, you see a sticker, uh, maybe a warning sign. Kids shouldn't have this. Maybe we produce um, uh, a certain uh, clothing um, product or a certain good that is more suitable for elderly people. Okay, so this is how we sort of um, indicate to whom we are producing. Um, so the main questions once again are what do we produce, how do we produce these things and for whom do we produce. So what do we produce, how do we produce and for whom do we produce. Now here we get to the age old question and debate in economics. How do we solve these economic problems that we've just referred to? Okay, so what do we produce? How do we produce them? And for whom do we produce them? And typically we have three types of economies. Okay, your first one is your planned economy. Okay, I'll highlight this in red. Now, in your planned economy, the government allocates resources. So think about North Korea, think about Cuba, all right? So you have a supreme dictator who sort of plans the whole economy, plans what hairstyles people should have on their hair, what kind of clothes people should wear, you know, things people can say, maybe even plans of religion, you know, very personal things. Um, I'm not, we're not going to get into the ethics of this. We're just going to describe how these economies are. So you have your planned economy, right, where the government sort of, commands tells people what to do now the question is who should be commanding who like who if we have different views and you're commanding me you know but that, that's a philosophical debate then you have your free market economy okay where your market forces of demand and supply determine these questions so you have your free market economy right right and this is where we have our um sort of freedom right so here we're sort of freer right so demand and supply if people demand it if they want to spend their money for it we supply it okay so here you have people saying um supply creates demand for instance okay does it always happen hmm, there's a huge debate around that examples of this you have hong kong singapore australia the us very extreme examples of a uh, capitalism where the economy sort of decides what to do. Okay, then you have sort of um, in the middle of that, you have your mixed economy where you have sort of a planned economy. The government sort of, you know, hints what it wants, right? But then there's freedom as well. Now, people will usually say, okay, um, um, a mixed economy is sort of better because you get rid of market inefficiencies and market failure for instance your tragedy of commons okay your pollution problem right so if we allow the um the economy to run freely who's going to handle pollution so companies pollute the waterway they pollute the atmosphere right but we need laws to say hey if you pollute you need to clean it up we need child labor laws for instance saying you can't have under age children working in your factory when laws for equality for instance so a mixed economy is sort of hinted at at being sort of um a bit moderate uh, 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 sort of what we what we want but you know you could you could think about it you can read about the three types and you can draw your own conclusions there are advantages and disadvantages for every type of economy okay so maybe your planned economy, you know, maybe you, you have a, a certain worldview you're trying to uphold. Maybe with free market economy, you really, 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 really cherish your freedom. When you're mixed economy, there's certain things you need to put in place. So uh, you can think about it in terms of free will and control for each of them, uh, for each of the economies we have just described. Now, your class activity, your second class activity is to go and research or think about which system of government is better. Do you like your planned economy? Do you like your free market economy? Or do you like your mixed economy? And tell us why. And write this down, think about it, and we will discuss this in class. Okay, see you on the other side.